but we're going to start off with a guest today. And this is someone that we've talked about a lot on the show. I'm sure you've heard his name a lot talking about offensive linemen and offseason training, and that is Duke Manyweather, who does a lot of offensive line scouting and development, OL Masterminds. Duke, you've been training Will Hernandez this offseason. Thank you for joining us on the show today. Hope you and your family are doing well. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, it's my pleasure to uh, come on and talk ball, talk shop, um, especially when it comes to O-line. Um, so I, I'm really, really appreciative for you guys having me on. And we are pumped to have you on because we like to get into the weeds on this stuff. And I know you've had Will this offseason. You've been working on him. So let's start from the 20,000-foot vantage point first, Duke. What are the major things when Will came to you this offseason, wanted to work with you, that you guys are really trying to focus on to get him to improve his game? Yeah, you know, one of the biggest things with uh, – and this, this is pretty standard with anyone – um, that I'm going to work with is we base everything off of how they move and we kind of identify areas for improvement. And so that start, that evaluation starts first watching tape on the guy and identifying some issues. Uh, and, you know, for Will, it was uh, moving laterally and then being able to maintain positioning uh, while moving laterally. I think there's no secret about what Will can do to displace the point of attack in the run game. Sure. Um, and he's pulling. Uh, but, you know, where he, where he got in trouble is, you know, shoulders turning and then redirecting and, uh, and pass pro. So that was one of the first things I saw. Um, and then when we got him in person and started to move him around and do, you know, the, the movement evaluation and function of movement screening and things of that nature, kind of what we thought we saw on tape was cross-reference what we saw in person. Um, with uh, some of that movement-based analysis, so uh, that was a that was a focus. Um, the twenty thousand view, the twenty thousand foot view, as you would say. But more specifically, when we get pro guys back uh, in the building, we need to make sure that they're healthy, they're stable, they're mobile. Um, and, you know, we'll actually play through some injuries last year, um, and so getting him healthy into a place where he was confident to be able to move with uh, intent was the, the main objective. So a after we kind of identified these areas uh, for improvement, it was like, okay, now let's break down the why um, of why isn't it going so efficient. And so once we started to attack those, uh, you know, we started to get the wheel leaner. Um, you know, he's down in the 325 range, which is a great weight for him. Um, it, it really, everything else really started to take off. So, Duke, from your perspective, was it as much mental stuff that he had to learn and had to clean up, or was it more physical stuff, the mechanics of the position, that maybe were more, you know, body control and, and you know, repetition and muscle memory and stuff Spot of on. that nature? Spot on. It was more of the body control and the movement literacy and efficiency. Uh, mentally, Will is a really, really fast learner and sharp learner. So any cue that we gave him, he was able to pick up on really quickly and execute it. But it was just teaching him the proper way uh, to, to move and understanding if you want to, if you're playing left guard and you want to move back to your right, uh, if a defender crosses your face, you can't really pick up that right foot to change directions. You've got to drive hard from the left foot and use the ground, push the ground away. That way, it propels you in an efficient manner that is going to have your shoulders and hips squared up. So stuff like that, just small little tweaks and cues to kind of what he's already doing, but maybe he hadn't typically thought about what he was doing. So we gave him those cues um, to, to really help his movement. And, again, he was able to execute them um, almost on the spot. Duke, you referenced the fact that Will had dealt with some injuries last season. I think probably one of the biggest things that unfortunately defined last season for him was having to deal with COVID right in the middle of the year. And then after that, as he tried to make his way to back onto the field, it was well documented that Shane Lemieux took over his position at left guard. I'm curious, are the conversations you had with Will, how much of a toll do you think COVID took on him last season and perhaps impacted his ability to get back on the field and return to where he left off? We had a few conversations about it and, uh, you know, the lingering effects of just him not feeling like he had his legs underneath him and feel, feeling winded and things of that nature uh, definitely took an effect. But, you know, the, the fact 
fact of the matter is, in the NFL, uh, the NFL is a uh, meritocracy, and it's earned every single day. And when you have a guy like Shane Lemieux, young up-and-coming guy, a guy who I really like coming out of Oregon, not flashy, tough nose, can move the point of attack, um, definitely um, really solid and pass protector, a more of an aggressive player. Like, when you have guys like that that are showing up every day and competing, you know, there's only a small room for error for anything to go wrong where you can imp- implement a guy like that into the lineup and he's going to make you better. So the conversations wasn't so much about what you need to do to get your job back or anything like that. It was, hey, let's give you a skill set and polish your skill set up at left guard. Let's give you a skill set built out that way you can play right guard. That way you're an asset to your team being, a, being able to be a two-position player. So that was really the approach that we took this offseason season is making sure that Will got reps and the coaching that he needed uh, on the right side and then also on the left side. That way, you know, you got to feel good about having the the potential of having two really stout and aggressive guards in a Will Hernandez and Shane Lemieux um, at the point, um, you know, kind of shouldering uh, Nick Gates. So that was what the conversation was about. Control, you can control. And that, that's all you can do. I've been in uh, contact with Coach Sell, and we've kind of been on the same page of the direction we want to go with Will's development. So um, in, in, in those terms, um, again, the, the term that I'm going to keep using is execution. Everything that we presented to Will and, uh, you know, thought that, you know, Will should pay attention to, he took it and ran with it and executed exactly what we asked. You mentioned the chance to potentially move to right guard. Just based on snaps and games, Will's always been a left guard, going back to even his days in school, Duke. I don't know how much he's done in practice and things of that nature. So how big of a transition was that for him to get him those reps at right guard? And what are some of the things that you focus on to help a player make that switch? Because I I really think it is a little bit more difficult than a lot of people give it credit for. Yeah, it's definitely difficult. Um, if done in, throughout the course of a game or in the middle of a game or in the middle of a week, it's very hard to get into a groove in which I don't like to use the word comfortable, but which you're moving efficient and effectively. Uh, so it took us a couple of weeks, but where you start out is from the gr- ground up. And what we did was make sure that he got a stance that was functional in a two-point and a three-point stance as a right-side player. And then from there – we talked about his positioning and posture as a right side player, the recruitment, what he should feel, where his hips should be, where his shoulders should be, um, eyes, um, just from the ground up, just the posture and spatial awareness. From there, we then built out, you know, a pass set, and we talked about, you know, his landmarks and creating space and then closing space um, as a pass protector from the right side. And then from there, we built out the run game. And we talked about how important – not so much your steps are going to be, but, you know, executing the proper footwork to get your hips to where they need to be. Um, that way you don't try to make things feel like on the left side. The biggest thing that guys always do and it ends up being wrong is they feel comfortable on the dominant side. And so if they switch to a new side, they want to feel that same level of comfort. And I, told, I tell guys, I said, the minute you start feeling that same level of comfort early on with switching positions is the minute that you're going to be in a bad situation. So it should, if you're if you're doing everything correctly and you're doing it with intent and you're doing it with the focus on, all right, I need to make sure that um, my positioning is proper. Early on, it should be a, a level of awkwardness. It, it should not feel natural. Uh, but as you start to go on, um, it won't feel comfortable, but you'll start to just simply react. You know, it becomes um, a learned skill even further than, with anything else on the whole line, especially switching sides. So that, that really was a focus is from the ground up, everything starts with the stance of O-line, and then from the stance it starts with the posture, and then from the posture it starts with the actual te- tactical and technique side of moving your feet and getting your feet and body into position, and then you know allowing your body and your base to always be underneath you and be in proper position to be able to counter and to be able to displace and to be able to redirect and things of that nature. Duke, the Giants really rebuilt their offensive line in almost one big swoop last year. They drafted three rookies. They had Will coming back as a young veteran. They moved Nick Gates into center for the first time in his career. And we always hear about continuity being so important to an offensive line. Uh, How much better do you think 
guys like Thomas and Lemieux and, and Gates and, and Will Hernandez, and even if, if Parrott winds up winning the right tackle spot, how much better will these guys be because they've been in the Giants program for, for a year together? And I know Rob Sale is their new offensive line coach, but I suppose it sounds like you know him very well. So could you kind of explain to us his style and how you think this group may play for him? Yeah, I think uh, the big thing is, is, you know, there was some adversity that that old line room had to deal with last year with a uh, coaching change and just kind of the drama that surrounded that. Um, nothing you ever want to have to deal with, and you definitely don't want to get outside the building. But in today's current climate of social media and how things get reported on, it was a well-known fact that there was some um, disruption and adversity that took place in that room. With that being said, I think Rob Sale is going to do a fine job. His track record for development um, at places like Georgia and Louisiana Lafayette and even um, Arizona State and things, things like that um, have been tremendous. Um, he was responsible for in, for helping with the development. Him and D.J. Loney were uh, were guys like Kevin Dawson, who ended up being a fourth rounder and a tremendous rookie player last year for the Pittsburgh Steelers, and Robert Hunt for the Miami Dolphins. And the list goes on with some of the guys that they have worked with, um, and you know at some, and in some situations, not big power five schools, but still have a great track record for development. So last year, when you look at bringing in, uh, you know, uh, Andrew Thomas, you know, Thomas is a guy that struggled early on, but I thought that as the season went on, he started to get better and better. It typically takes those guys eight to ten weeks to fall in line with a new offense and some of the new techniques. And when you factor in no offseason program last year for young guys, no real training camp with no real preseason games. It took those rookies, rookies to, you know, a, a while to kind of grasp it and get it. Um, so it's expected. But I'm excited about the potential that this unit has. With I, I'm a big fan of Matt Pert and his potential, um, you know, and I, I think Andrew Thomas will 100% be better. Uh, again, we talked about Lemieux and we talked about uh, Will um, and we talked about Nick Gates. So I think another year underneath their belt, together, competing uh, with Rob Sale's uh, philosophy in terms of being development first and coaching those guys hard and showing them that he cares, I think that the Giants should be feeling pretty darn confident heading into this season. We're talking with Duke Mayweather of offensive line master mounds, masterminds, excuse me, training Will Hernandez throughout the course of this offseason as he was working his way back from injury and covid Duke, I'm curious, when you mentioned that you had conversations with new Giants offensive line coach Rob Sale and how I know at the collegiate level there's restrictions on coaching interaction with players, the same thing can be said about the NFL offseason. I'm curious, how do you go about walking that fine line of trying to imprint your philosophy with them in terms of what you see on film, what you want them to work with, but also receiving feedback from their coaches and understanding the philosophy so that those messages are pretty much in line with one another? Yeah, I th- one, of the, one of the things that I've noticed is that when talking to offensive line coaches about development, is hearing them out and kind of kind of understanding what they see and what their ideal goal is for each player and with the unit. And then from there, I'll kind of say, all right, well, this is how I go about doing things. This is kind of what I see. And what we end up saying is that sometimes the verbiage and the language is a little different, but the overarching theme is typically the same with a lot of these players. We're not trying to reinvent the wheel of what these guys are doing. We're trying to make what they have in terms of traits and critical factors more efficient and effective. And that's plain and simple. So um, there is a fine line in terms of what the coaches can do in the off season, and it's never – it really has nothing to do with break, uh, walking close to that fine line. It's just being on the same page. Hey, this is kind of where we see X, Y, Z player and what they need to improve on. And here's some tidbits of how they may learn, especially if I've never worked with a guy. And I'll go, okay, I'll note all that stuff and then kind of, you know, provide feedback of the direction I'm going to go in. But again, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel. We want to put these players in the best possible case scenario um, to help out their team. Duke, one more from me, and then the other guys each have one more, I think, as well. And and pardon the long question, but I, I feel like a lot of times when we're talking about drafting offensive linemen, people will say, all right, if he doesn't work out attack, you just put him in there at guard. And oh, I, man. I, I know, <laughs> because I always talk to Shona Hara and David Deal, and they always preach to me, Duke, and they're like, 
John, it is a completely different position, and the skills you need to succeed are completely different. So can you just talk a little bit about how you train those two positions differently, and specifically with pass probes? I think that's where we want the Giants to kind of get better on the interior this year with Hernandez and Lemieux. How the challenges are different for guards and tackles with pass pro specifically and just playing those two different spots as you try to develop guys on the line. Yeah, at tackle, you, of course, you've got a lot more space. And depending on if a, uh offense is built on vertical sets or angle sets, that can change things as far as how you're going to teach your tackles, how to set, where to set. Um, the biggest thing is getting the guys comfortable in setting into space and then getting to their spot. So um, at guard, we, at guard and interior, we talk about creating space off the line of scrimmage or uh, or closing space if we're going to be aggressive setting. At tackles, a little different. We want to make sure that we're getting to our spot, which is that junction point between yourself, the defender, and when the fight is, essentially is going to start. That way, it puts you in position to defend against uh, that rusher getting to the quarterback. So. Um, getting guys comfortable with that at tackle uh, versus, you know, more intermediate at guard. And, you know, things happen at guard way faster. You know, a lot of times you got to end the fight right now, which means that you've got to be really efficient with your footwork and really effective hands. Um, at tackle, again, the fight is going to come to you just a little slower. Um, but once it comes to you, it's aggressive and it moves fast. But you got a little more space. Uh, to work with there. So as we train these guys, uh, we try to typically pair our tackles with our tackles and our guards with our guards because we work with the same things. Um, so as far as the pass pro, the biggest thing is, again, understanding that these tackles must be trained to get to a spot and be able to move, um, you know, expanding set point laterally um, and sometimes vertically versus, you know, your interior guys, again, creating that initial space off the line of scrimmage keeping half, man, playing inside out and being really patient, uh, but but being heavy-handed when you need to be um, to end the fight. And then just to follow up, Duke, I think similarly, right, inside you're dealing with a lot more of the, that movement from the defensive lineman, right? The twists, mm -hmm. the stunts, and you got to keep level with the guy next to you to pass them off, right? How much do you work with guys on that part of it where it's as much technique as it is recognition, um, you know, where your eyes are and, and adjusting to that sort of stuff mentally? Daily, daily. We tried. We harp on again the fundamentals: stance, getting out your stance, get the proper set. And then when we're working tandem stuff with like a guard, a tackle, or a guard and center, we always talk about the importance for of communication and then eyes. A lot of times, guys get beat or they're not in position because their eyes are in the wrong place. So we harp on that a lot. What are you looking at? Where's your focal point at? Um, you know, that way guys can can really tap into what's happening, and that allows their processing to be on point. That way they can play with uh, good, really good play speed. Duke, let me, let me ask you this, because there were so many people going into the draft, and myself included, that thought maybe the Giants should take another offensive lineman to increase the competition for the starting five, and yet they didn't do it. And Dave Gettleman says, you know what? We think internally we're going to get the kind of improvement out of these young guys who need to play to prove to everybody that they can be good enough. So I guess what I would like to ask you is, from your talent evaluation perspective, how good and how quickly can this Giants offensive line get to the appropriate level that they need to get to to be a winning football team? And quite frankly, and, and, and maybe this is unfair to ask you, but of the potential starting five, Thomas, Lemieux, Hernandez, Gates at center, and Parrott at right tackle, could you maybe just give our fans out there one or two things about each of those guys that you really like and see so much potential in? Because it sounds like, as a whole, you like this offensive line. Yeah, I think that the potential that this offensive hot, uh, line um, has a chance to realize it can, can really be a stout offensive line. Um, they're going to be challenged in the division with some of these D lines. Um, you know, you got to love or, or hate, so to speak, with uh, the Eagles <laughs> and the, the Washington football team has done up front with their front seven. Um, those two the defensive lines the past couple of years have been good, really good, and this year they did nothing but add to them. So <laughs> when you look at um, – 
the teams in the division, you know, with Dallas has done with some of their pass rushers and interior rushers, um, there's not going to be a, a break in the action. So the potential for this unit is going to need to be realized. But I, the, the cool thing is, is that you got some semblance of an off-season program. You've got a fresh start with a new coach that takes developmental um, aspects of developing an O-line series. Um, it is like his numero uno. So I think that's important. But um, I, I like the potential that Pert, Matt Pert has. Uh, I think that um, just the overall length and athleticism, uh, some of the things he's able to do with his hands, he's got to clean up his pass set in terms of consistency, over setting. But then he's really, really physical in the run game. So I like that about Pert. Uh, we talked about the things that Lemieux and Will Hernandez both bring with this place in the point of attack being really good and effective in the run game. Um, both are really good pullers. Um, I think Lemieux, in terms of pass protector, when he's able to get on guys and latch on, is really, really good. I think you're going to see improvement in Will Hernandez's pass protection. And I think Nick, Nick Gates is really steady um, at center, especially for being new to the position. Um, I like what Andrew Thomas does when he's on, smooth pass protector. Um, I think if he can continue to add consistency with his set and being in position to effectively use his hands, I think that was a real issue for him last year is just being in position to use those hands and to use that length. He never really was there consistently, uh, but as you start to see late into the season, it started to pop for him. So if we can take these one or two areas for improvement for each of these guys and start to build those out and start to play into their wheelhouse and their strength house, you get guys like a Saquon Barkley back, and all of a sudden this run game is going to take off a little bit more. And you know when the run game is off, all of a sudden, you know, there's going to be opportunities to hit uh, teams over the top. So it's kind of a snowball effect. I think the Giants in some ways last year kind of ran into a perfect storm. Um, so we're hoping that there's sunnier days ahead in, uh, in, uh, in New York. And in short, Duke, you believe that's realistic, that it could happen sooner rather than later? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that when you go out and you draft the type of guys that um, get them and draft it and you factor them into what's already – um, in the room, um, you got to feel comf- confident in that, that that can happen. And I think it can happen um, this season. And I think that you will see an improvement. I think that the front office felt that this was an opportunity to add to the team in a, in a different way and not go in the direction of adding an O-lineman early. And so that, I think that speaks volumes to how they view this unit and its potential as well. Duke, before we let you go, I think what was unique about what the Giants did on the offensive line last season was at times they would rotate personnel where you'd have a right tackle in for one possession and then a completely new right tackle in for another possession. Matt Paird, Andrew Thomas, we saw sometimes they rotate in and out with Cam Fleming. Since you pretty much have focused on this position and you've seen a lot of football, I'm curious, how unique is that? And... How much do you think that could be a part of Rob Sales' philosophy as he now takes over his O-line coach? I have no idea if that is going to be a part of Rob's philosophy. I personally don't like the idea of rotating offensive linemen. Um, Offensive line, again, is about continuity. And then when you're playing, it's very difficult to come off the bench and, you know, not have a feel for the tempo of the game, especially if you come in and, you know, there's just certain aspects of the game, not so much about momentum, but there's going to be times where there's going to be obvious pass situations um, and there's going to be um, where defenders are really pinning their ears back to coming after you. If you kind of get thrown into the fire and don't have success, then like at that point, that mentally can take its toll on you. Now, of course, the average fan and the coach speak and all that, people are going to say, oh, well, you need to be mentally tough and you got to be locked in. Yeah, that's fine and dandy, but – Let's wake you up in the middle of a uh, middle of the night and run a fire drill. I mean that's <laughs> yeah. that, that's that's the equivalent. Sure. And so when you get five guys on the line and you know barring injury, barring you know somebody just performing poorly, um, I, I'm a really big proponent of keeping your unit your unit, not switching guys in and out, um, especially if it's not giving you a competitive advantage. Duke, we really appreciate the time. Tell the folks where they can find you, what you're up to, what you're doing, and anything else you want to get out there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, strikeleveragedryfinish.com. Um, there's apparel on there. Um, we'll be doing some cool 
content pieces as well on the website. So strike leverage drive finish.com. And then uh, my Instagram um, at the big Duke 50 uh, all spelled out with the five zero. And then uh, my Twitter just at big Duke 50. Um, you could check out some of the stuff we, we did with me and former giant um, Jeff Schwartz with the big boys club, kind of highlighting some of the top draft prospects in this past year's draft. Um, Fox Sports did a phenomenal job with that series. You can find those on all the Fox Sports uh, platforms and on YouTube. There's just tremendous X and O content. If you want to know about the lifestyle of an offensive lineman or the mental aspect of what goes into the X's and O's and the technique, we really peel back the curtain to give an in-depth look on uh, Panay Sewell, Rashawn Slater, Creed Humphrey, um, Trey Smith, uh, Quinn Miners, and just uh, our overall uh, arcing theme of what we try to get done with the lifestyle of offensive line development. That's awesome, Duke. We really appreciate it. Best of luck to you, and let's definitely catch up in the next offseason, maybe heading into the draft. You could talk about some of those 2021 prospects, all right? Absolutely. Thanks, Duke. Great Thanks, stuff. Duke. Appreciate it. Thank you, Duke.